Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 18 as we continue our Bible character series and looking at the person of Abraham. And we have a lot of verses to read today. Um, and so let's just get right to it. Verses 22 all the way through the end of the chapter. But this is, a, this is a powerful, powerful story in Abraham's life. So let's start verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Remember, three men walked by. Abraham took care of them, fed them, washed their feet, gave them water, all of that. And then as they were talking, God, the Lord, okay, was one of those men. So it was the Lord and two of his angels, okay? And uh, the Lord revealed to Abraham how he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, Abraham knows, okay, that, because remember, Abraham rescued Lot, his nephew, and brought him back to his home in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? So, so Abraham knows that Lot and his family are there, okay? He's already been there to, to rescue Lot and bring him back when he was uh, captured and taken away by, by enemy forces during a big war, so Abraham knows that. And hearing this, I'm sure, was very alarming for Abraham. And so he begins to negotiate with God. And I'm sure many of you uh, know this story, but let's, let's read it. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth, capital J, he's talking about God to God now, he's talking to God about God, okay? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Wow, that's a bold statement. It's a bold question to ask God. Will, will the judge of the earth not do right? Will you not do right, God? That's, I don't know if I would have the, the guts to do that. But, uh, but you know, again, Abraham walked very closely with the Lord. He was a friend of God. And he is pleading for the life of his nephew and, and his family. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. And there's his, his humility. He asked a bold question. <clears throat> Excuse me. He made a bold statement, but then he made sure to remember who he is and who God is. Okay, and said, I, "I'm just ashes and dust. I understand that. I'm sorry, God. You know, I'm just. I, I'm. I know I come before you as that." Okay, uh, verse twenty-eight. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, "If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it." So he, Abraham was able to convince God. Of course. There's no convincing. God already knew what he was going to say, and God already knew what, how God was going to respond, right? Um, he's, he's, he's not bound by time. He already knows all of this. And so Abraham, in the conversation, concedes to, I'm sorry, God in the conversation concedes to Abraham and says, okay, Abraham, if I find 45 people <coughs> righteous, uh, meaning saved, I will not destroy the city. Uh, so then Abraham continues to negotiate with God. Um, he spoke, he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for 40's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak peradventure. There shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak not but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. So Abraham was able to talk God down to ten. Ten. And I believe that is because Lot, his wife, he had two single daughters, right? And then we also know that Lot had daughters, plural, and sons-in-law. And so I believe he had three other daughters and, the, and their husbands, and that makes 10. Either that or he had, uh, you know, maybe two other daughters. We know minimum two, right? So even then, that would be two daughters and two sons. That's eight. And then maybe each of them had a child. But nevertheless, Abraham was calculating his mind. Okay, surely... 
surely there would be 10. Just within within Lot's family, I taught him better. I taught Lot how to teach his family about the Lord, right? And and, and all of that. So, so, you know, surely there would be 10 that were righteous, meaning they were saved. Okay, because remember, righteousness comes from believing, not from works, right? Uh, Abraham was counted unto him for righteousness because he believed on God, not for any works that he did. Righteousness before God, not before man, but as described in James, but before God, as described in Romans, only comes through faith, right? And so surely these 10 righteous before God, meaning 10 saved, surely there are 10 saved people. And he was able to negotiate with God. Unfortunately, there were not. We'll look at that later. Um, But there were not. But nevertheless, Abraham did his job. Abraham, what Abraham did is an example for all New Testament believers to do. That's what we, that's where we come in. That's where the church comes in. We are the Abraham of, of, of the Sodom and Gomorrah of this world. Okay. As ambassadors for Christ with the truth of Christ and the gospel light, this is, it is our duty. It is our job Commanded in the Great Commission, okay, uh, the, 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 the last thing that Jesus left us before he sent it into heaven, we are to spread the gospel, the gospel message unto the ends of the earth as many people as are, are willing to hear. And let me tell you, <clears throat> if we are to save California, okay, it is not going to be through uh, getting involved in politics. Does that mean that no Christian should get, get involved in politics? No, that's not what that means. That is not at all what I'm saying. If you believe God has called you uh, you know, to run for office, uh, by all means, God bless you. We need more uh, believers in office in positions of, of, of power. Uh, you know, Absolutely, uh, that would be wonderful. But let me tell you, that's, that is only surface level stuff. You really want to get down to the roots of how we save California. It is by witnessing to people with the gospel and getting more and more righteous people. Not righteous in, in, in that they're perfect, they never do anything wrong. Righteous as in getting them saved by the gospel. By delivering the gospel message and getting more and more people saved by the gospel. So that God will withhold judgment, first of all, because you know that California is due for judgment. Withhold that judgment. But also, it is only through those righteous people, those saved people, can we first of all have more saved people because as as the, the light spreads and the gospel spreads, but also the culture of those who are saved theoretically should change the culture of that area you know should lot have been successful in getting people saved and to call upon the name of the lord in sodom it would not have turned to that kind of wickedness and i am completely out of time but let us do our due diligence as ambassadors for christ and and let me tell you i still have hope for california but we need to increase the amount of righteous people in this day. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Happy Valentine's Day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.